Kai Smala here and I have stopped in the beautiful um, Thistle Park uh, in Stoke Newington to pay tribute to my friend Amanda Lippman whose 10 year death anniversary it is tomorrow. Uh, Amanda was born the same year as I was, 1961, three days before me um, on the 6th of April and I met her at Spare Rib magazine in the early 1980s. We've both just graduated from university. I from London University and her from either Oxford or Cambridge. I always forget, but I think it was Oxford. And of course she got a first in English and I got a lower second in philosophy. <laughs> and um, she was a highly intelligent woman and very, I would say she was very reserved but she was also, um, you know, she was very warm. She was a very warm woman. And I remember when I was having Zinze, we were living together at the time in the Caledonia Road. And I had Zins in Whittington Hospital. And as it happened, Amanda's brother, Mark, and she's only got one sibling, was training as a doctor at the time. So this was 1986. And, um, he was in that hospital and when I woke up from having had Zinze and being brought back to the ward Mark was sitting on my bed and I looked up and for a minute I thought it was Amanda because they looked you know he was like the male version of her anyway we lived together I think for about a year and we had a lot of fun together and um, Amanda went on to found a magazine it was kind of like a rival to Time Out. Um, she had worked for Time Out for a while and it was Amanda that got me that gig uh, interviewing Denzel Washington. So now you know why I love her so much. <laughs> I've been living off my Denzel Washington story for 35 years, Amanda, thank you. And um, she called me up one day, I think it was 1988, and she said, oh, Marla, uh, there's a new film out. It's called Cry Freedom and we thought you'd like to cover it uh, and you get to interview Denzel Washington. And um, as it happened, I was a lucky journalist chosen to have dinner with Denzel because he had so many interviews that day. The poor man didn't get to eat. And finally they said, okay, you, he's got to eat, but he's got to work, so eat and work. And um, we were together for about two hours eating and working. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Anyway, Amanda made that happen for me. This is a park in which we used to walk, Amanda and I. Uh, we used to walk around. She loved this park. She loved nature anyway. She just loved walking. I know she used to tramp all over Hampstead Heath with her husband, her now husband, Hugh. And she was a great nature lover, that girl. And you know, cancer got her. Yeah cancer got her she fought it like a devil she fought it off once it was breast cancer and I think she was free for about eight years and she had her last child Isa in that time she'd already had Rachel and Jacob oh my god I think Rachel's 25 this year I really do I have to check that and um it came back the cancer came back and there was nothing she could do. She did everything she could. She fought it. She really wanted to live. She really wanted to see her kids grow up. I think Isabel was about 10 when she died. 10 years tomorrow. So that's what life is, people. We're here one day and then we're gone the next. And you know, there's lots of people around who are vaccine hesitant and they're living in fear of the vaccine. <laughs> Cancer is more dangerous. So, um, whatever you want to do, just do it, okay? Just do it. We're here for a little time. We don't get even get to live as long as this bloody tree here. I love a willow. I love, it's like one of my favorite trees, the willow. Um, I think we need a little bit of Joan right now. Thunder, don't go under the sheets. 
lightning under a tree i can't remember the next line that's from the song willow go and listen to it i love that song and um i'm really loving my life right now even though things are a little bit hard with my newly diagnosed condition i mean i have just walked from the john scott center which is about half a mile away from here it's taken me over half an hour because i had to stop a couple of times and rest because what happens is my arms get really tired it's a muscle degenerative muscle illness and my arms get tired and so if i did that like 20 times my, my arms would be exhausted and i wouldn't be able to lift them up for five or ten minutes but if i rest i can just i can just keep going so i just get my rollator out oh i'll show you my rollator and um her name is scarlet because she's got red seat and i close her up she closes up like a pram and i put her in a in a uber and i go wherever i want and i just take my time and it's all fine it's absolutely all fine life is good <laughs>